again, my name is Tara McGith, and I'm an attorney with the Law Offices of Drinkwater and Goldstein. Our office is located in Camden County, New Jersey. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about a topic of excited conversation, usually for most people, amusement parks. Most people are very excited during the summertime to get to, to go to various amusement parks, and New Jersey has some great amusement parks. There are various amusement parks that can be located along the Jersey Shore. Uh, Six Flags Great Adventure up in Jackson, New Jersey, Clementon uh, Park and Splash World in Clementon, New Jersey, um, and then some of the smaller, more site-specific locations such as Sahara Sam's or Diggerland, just to name a few. So we're going to be talking about amusement park injuries. So not as exciting as uh, getting to go to an amusement park, um, but it is a fact of life that in anything that you do, which includes going to the amusement park, that you might be injured as a result of your interaction on various amusements. Um, so we're here today to talk about, uh, and this is New Jersey specific, law with regards to amusement park rides. Um, but to start off with, I'd like to start off with two specific examples of amusement park injuries, one local um, to New Jersey and one out of Kansas. So in 2016 in Kansas, a 10 year old was unfortunately killed in a water park accident. Um, and his family was the recipient following litigation of the largest uh, wrongful death case involving a minor where they received nearly $20 million from a variety of sources. And that's one of the things when you think about an amusement park injury is it's not necessarily only the amusement park operator, uh, in other words, the owner of the park that you are at, that has a responsibility for any accident which occurs. Now certainly they're going to have some responsibility because there's an ongoing maintenance and upkeep requirement for the amusement um, operator, but you also have to pay attention to who was the construction uh, company that was involved in the construction. Was the ride constructed as it was intended to be constructed? And then going along with that in terms of how it is intended to be constructed, was it even safe in the manner that it was designed to be constructed? Because the designer and the manufacturer may have designed and put together a ride that was just simply unsafe. Um, and in this particular instance, um, this is probably one of those rides that uh, were not safe from the very beginning. The water slide that the young child was on was called the Verruckt. I'm sure I'm saying that incorrectly. If you're so inclined to look it up, the spelling is V-E-R-R-U-C-K-T. It was uh, in the Guinness Book of World Records, believe it or not, for its height, 168 feet, seven inches, which just means I'm not going on it. It's too high. So unfortunately, uh, Caleb was found to have died of a fatal neck wound and it's believed that his raft went airborne, striking the netting system placed above the slide. And he wasn't the only one injured, but he was the only one killed. Um, now, this leads to the question of, as I indicated, maintenance and safety. So various states are going to have different requirements in terms of uh, inspection and maintenance requirements. So in New Jersey, uh, New Jersey has a, group of inspectors which are responsible for inspecting the various amusements and actually signing off on their appropriateness both in terms of uh, safety concerns that it's appropriate for individuals to be able to go on it and so that's where you're going to see you know children under 42 inches may not ride this ride or people over 42 inches may not ride this ride. And that's in part going to be based upon a few different sources. So that could be as a result of a manufacturer indicating that over or under a certain height or weight that it, the person would be unsafe on that ride. Similarly, there's a maintenance requirement. So the state has an interest and has assigned inspectors to determine whether or not the uh, 
ride is being properly maintained so that it is safe for use. And that safety and the maintenance comes in a couple of different forms. And so that leads us to our second injury, which is the more local injury. So several years ago now, in 2010, approximately, um, at the Sarah Hams Water Parks, we're talking water parks today, um, an individual was uh, partially paralyzed when he utilized an attraction where he was using a flow board um, in water. So he was kind of fake surfing. You've seen those um, kinds of rides at various water parks. And so he unfortunately had never used this type of ride before. And so he was not familiar with the sort of requirements or things that he should really be concerned about. And he contended that the attendant failed to inform him that instead of standing up and attempting to surf as a first timer, that he probably should have gone on his belly and laid actually on the board to avoid significant injury. Not knowing this, he stood up on the board and was caused, as I said, to sustain fairly significant injury. Now he claimed that there were not proper safety signs in addition to the fact that the attendant failed to properly warn him or at least advise him on how he should be using the flow board as a first time rider. Um, in addition to that, um, the signs that had been placed near the ride were old. There, uh, they had come from the owner's manual, but the owner as a manufacturer of the ride had actually updated the warnings in a later update to the manual, which the Harris Sands had not updated in terms of its signage. And so warnings are a big portion of when you're going to be injured in an accident like this, whether or not there is sufficient warning being given to the individual who is utilizing the product. So that falls within more of a product safety issue. But here it became an issue because while the manufacturer had updated the warning and the, the notices that should be given to patrons, the owner of the actual water park had not. They were continuing to utilize the previous warning. And so the court found that the distinction between the two warnings was sufficient enough for the litigation to continue. Um, and so that flows sort of into the last portion of our discussion, which is in the state of New Jersey, if you are injured on an amusement park ride, you are required to give in writing notice to the owner of the park within 90 days of the incident. Otherwise, you may never be able to sue for any or recover for any injuries that you sustained in such an amusement park incident. Um, the amusement park operators are required to publicly post this in a manner where the patrons are able to see it. But if I pulled every single one of you who watches this video, I would be surprised if more than five to 7% of you actually knew what I just said or had seen a sign to that effect. Because while posting publicly does require that it be posted in a public format or public placement so that it can be seen, very rarely do we actually see it or does the operator or any of the employees actually point to the patrons that such a sign exists. And I very much doubt if you've ever been injured at an amusement park, maybe not so seriously as the two that we discussed today, that you were informed that you had 90 days to give notice that you intended, uh, that you were injured and therefore preserve your right to sue if appropriate. Now, there are uh, certain laws in New Jersey in which the operator has the right to say, hey, I don't think that it's appropriate for you to ride on this particular ride. So if you are intoxicated or appear to be intoxicated, the operator of the particular ride has the right to say to you, you may not at this point in time go on to the ride. 
and they do have the right to do that. Similarly, we've all seen the signs. If you have a back injury, if you're pregnant, if you're elderly, if you're very young, that certain rides are not appropriate for you under those conditions to ride. And New Jersey has laws which track that and which allow the operator to actually say, I'm sorry, under these conditions, we can't let you ride today. So if you have been injured uh, as a result of riding on an amusement park ride of any kind within the state of New Jersey, please feel free to give us a call. We're happy to discuss it with you and see if we could be of any assistance. Um, hopefully this video has been some of, of some assistance to you and given you more knowledge than you had before. We always hope to teach you something. If you have any questions or concerns about any other topic within the personal injury field that you would like us to discuss on a later video, please feel free to utilize any of our um, contact information. Feel free to drop a comment to this video and please as always subscribe so that you'll get notice of the next video. Until next time, I'm Tara McGitz. And this is uh, the law offices of Drinkwater and Goldstein that we are sending this to you from. Have a great weekend, you guys.